cooking. I'm so excited that you could join me today. Today we're going to be making an easy Parmesan crusted chicken. It is so delicious and I think that you really will enjoy it. So as many of you know, since you've been following me since the beginning of March, I like thighs. So after each cooking class that we do, we have lunch. So Sarah, I think likes breast. Do you like breast, Sarah? Or do you like? Are you a thigh girl? I might be a thigh girl too. Thighs are so tender; they take longer to cook. But it's been my preference, and like I've told you before, it's my dad's preference. But today, I have Sarah's dad here, Sarah's brother here, the dogs here. <laughs> so I made a breast too. Put out a breast for them. So let's get started. So you're going to use two cups of breadcrumbs. You're going to use two cups of really good Parmesan cheese. I think that if you guys search a little bit to find just not your regular um, Parmesan cheese, I would spend a little extra money and get a really good Parmesan cheese for this recipe. It's important. So two cups of that. You're going to put it in a big bowl. You're going to add your black pepper. You're going to add some grated garlic salt. I put, so I put um, a couple um, of fresh parsley in here, you can see, and I've got some dried parsley. You're going to mix all that up. Then you're going to take a whole stick of salted butter and you're going to melt it. And I've already melted that in advance um, for you guys. I have the hind legs, you can see, you can use whatever you want, breast, thighs, legs, skin on, skin off, it does not matter. It's what you like best. So you're gonna take your, your chicken, you're going to dip it in your melted butter. You get, are you getting that, Sarah? Yep. So you're gonna saturate the chicken really well. This is so easy, you guys, you just can't believe it, but it is so delicious. You're going to put your chicken in your breadcrumb mix, and you're gonna put it pretty heavy. You're gonna put that on your pan. And you can use whatever is your favorite big baking dish, cooking sheet. You can put parchment paper with, without. This is so easy, there aren't that many rolls, so you all should love that. This is the skinless chicken breast, hormone free. parsley on top of it and for those of you who like spicy you can always add some red pepper seeds to this it's just so great you're going to preheat your oven at 400 and you're going to bake this for 30 to 35 minutes you can turn your oven down to 375 once you're ready to put the chicken in so we're going to go ahead and add this into the oven I know some people do an egg wash, but you only do butter. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, this is the easiest recipe you can imagine. You just, it's your chicken, put it in the butter, melt your butter, and then your mixture, your Parmesan cheese. You can also put this Parmesan and breadcrumb mixture into a Ziploc bag if that's easier for you, and then put your chicken in and shake it. So it's whatever works best for you, but this is a very easy recipe. You wanna serve this, you know, right when it comes out of the oven. Um, this isn't one of my recipes that you can make in a, ahead of time. So this is sort of, you know, right before your guests get here. Okay, with that being said, that chicken is in the oven. We'll let that bake for 35 minutes to 40 minutes, depending on your oven. And let's get good, let's get to the really good stuff. I know Sarah <laughs> can't wait. I am making sangrias. I love sangrias. They are so refreshing and so delicious. Usually when I make a sangria, I like red. And red wine usually is a pinot noir. It's fruity, it's got lots of flavor. 
Um, but normally when I'm drinking at dinner, I like the big Zins, but for, the, for this particular um, recipe, you just want to stick with a Pinot Noir or, you know, something that's got a lot of flavor. And, and you don't need to spend a lot of money on when you're making um, a sangria. So um, let's get started. So I've got my Pinot Noir. It's a whole bottle that I poured in the pitcher and a couple splashes of ginger ale, a couple splashes of Grand Marnier, three squirts, and this is gonna be something different. This is maple syrup. So instead of doing a simple syrup, and you can use any of your favorite, but get real maple syrup. And it's just a couple dashes. So there's really no measuring here on this recipe um, for me. So then I add oranges, squeeze those in, a couple of those. The more fruit, the better. I've got grapes. I've got sliced pears. You can put any fruit. Any of your favorite fruit. Then I'm gonna show you another trick. Cinnamon sticks. Mm. They add so much flavor. It's a good idea. And they're so cute. You can even use it as a garnish. So you can lay it over the glass. So you can make a little slit in the strawberry or you can just put it on the end of the strawberry and immerse it. I don't like ice in my sangria. And if I am gonna use ice, I'm gonna fill my ice with strawberries or something. But if you can avoid putting ice in it, use the frozen fruit. And so it I, doesn't water down? Is that yeah, so that it's not so watered down in your um, sangria. And I use a whole bag. So there, I'm trying to get all this out. It's just whatever it's frozen, but I like it with the blackberries, the raspberries, you're gonna keep that in the um, freezer till you're ready to serve it. So you've got your ginger ale, you've got, and you can even add a little bit more for the foam. Your ginger ale, your Grand Marnier, your maple syrup, your pears, your cherries, your grapes, and the more that you can put in your sangria as far as fruit, I'm all over it. You can see how pretty it lo looks. It looks so good. So then you're gonna take some of this fruit out after it's immersed and you're gonna put it in your glass. And I also brought some glasses out here cause you can use so many different. You can use the great big glasses, you can use a glass brandy sniffner, but you want it to be a clear glass. So save your water for, for another one. You can use a little glass like this. I've got my bigger goblets. So it's whatever is your preference. But a sangria is pretty. It's all about the fruit. So you can see I've got a lot of fruit going on in there. Yum. Fill this up about halfway. Then we're going to add fresh mint, which I got out of my garden. We're gonna add a whole strawberry. We're going to put an orange on the side. We've got our cinnamon with our another strawberry. So you can make this. Let's load it up. Load it up. <laughs> and it's just so pretty. Then my lemon. And you can even push that orange down when you're ready to drink it. And we're ready to go. Cheers on the sangria. Sarah, <laughs> Sarah I'll make you one next. Okay. But I want to show you how yummy this chicken is. So we'll take this out of the oven. And on this one, I did use the parchment paper. Um, you guys can opt to or, or not to use that, so whatever you choose. Get a fun platter, you know, just something that's pretty. And you're gonna take your chicken, you can see how tender 
It looks amazing. Oh, you should smell this kitchen. And remember, thighs take longer. So we're gonna add for garnish. And, and you know, you could put rice around this. You, like I said, you could do fried potatoes and the potatoes could go all on the platter so you could make this a one platter dish. You can do ears of corn and it can go around it. You're gonna sprinkle some more Parmesan cheese. So, you know, it's endless. You can even put mashed potatoes going around the rim of this platter and laying your chicken on top. Yeah. French fries, whatever works for you and your family. So, you can tell Sarah <laughs> and I are going to have a great time. I'm very excited. We have our sangrias <laughs> loaded, <laughs> and we've got our Parmesan chicken. So I hope I've given you another great idea to fix for your friends and family. So until next week, cheers.